Hi everyone, I am Professor Manus Peters and I'm going to give you a short summary where I will discuss sensors, modeling and alternative design in binary characters. Sensors are classified into different types, so we go from offline to outline to inline and online. So in offline you have to take your sample out of the AR reactor, it needs to go to a specialized lab and it can take several hours to process. If we go to outline, your sample is diverted and it takes several minutes, let's say 10 to 20 minutes to process. Then we have online where your sample is still diverted, but it's a really fast measurement. And finally, we have inline where we're actually measuring the bioreactor. And that is quite complex because your bioreactor, there's a lot of things that are floating in uh, the solution that you're measuring in. So fouling can be a considerable problem. But typical sensors there are, for instance, pH and temperature, which you directly measure in your reactor. So if we measure things offline, it means there's a large delay between you getting your measurement results and you being able to apply some feedback and control to your system. So in most cases, that's not sufficient, especially if you're working with a fast growing system. So that's why inferential control is very popular. So what you do here is you don't directly measure the variable itself, but you measure uh, something else or multiple variables that can infer or estimate the state of this specific variable. And these can be things that are easier to measure or faster. And we call this the concept of a soft sensor, where you measure certain variables and you use some kind of estimator, so some kind of mathematical operation, to infer the state of the variable, and then you can apply your standard control, such as your PID control. So I'm not going to go into detail in the sensors that are used, and a lot of them are actually quite similar to a normal reactor. But what does stand out is that obviously here you need to measure the biomass, you want to check the growth and whether uh, your microorganisms are still viable. And you want to keep a very careful uh, look at the amount of nutrients that are available to your microorganisms. And I discussed two very common tools in order to make sense of your sensing data. So you end up with big data, so the interpretation can be quite complex. And the two most common tools, there are many more, but in the context of this course, I only discuss these two, are principal component analysis of or PCA and partial least squares, PLS. So first of all, they work in different ways. So PCA is not a mathematical tool, it's a way of visualizing your data. Um, so this actually helps to classify your system. Imagine if you've got very different batches, what you can see is if a batch is slightly off spec, it will appear in a different uh, area of the plot that you're looking at. And the way by this, this works, you look at the principal components. So you basically look at the variables that have the most variance and you plot them. However, that they have the most variance doesn't necessarily mean that they are actually linked to the output. So there are certain things in your system that can vary a lot, but not necessarily evaluate the quality of the output that you're getting. And in this case, this is where PLS, which is a mathematical tool, comes in handy, because this actually looks at the covariance. So this will tell you, it doesn't just look at the variance in the data, but it will look at what factors actually influence uh, the quality of your product the most. Uh, and you can break it down until only those that are critical uh, quality attributes for your products. And that means that you know which variables you've got to control in your reactor. And a word of caution, when it does come to the modeling, you will see this is only as good as how you train and validate your data. So you need to make sure that you've got a sufficient data set uh, in order to make this work. Well, within the course, we went over Monod Kinetics, which is a very simple way of how you can actually model your microorganism growth. In this case, we assume, and this is very similar to enzyme kinetics, where you have a michaelis mente constant. In our case, we have a Ks value. So it will tell you at very low substrate concentration, you see the response is almost linear, and then you see that it starts to flatten off because more of the substrate starts to cause some inhibition. Now, what you can do, and what you should be able to do after uh, watching the video, you should be able to calculate the maximum growth. And if we are working on the maximum growth conditions, we will see that it's independent of the substrate concentration. It only depends on the cell concentration. And then you have a very simple differential equation to solve. However, if you are uh, towards like uh, the higher substrate concentrations, then you will need to set up multiple equations, which you will need to solve in some kind of software, such as MATLAB. So we mainly focus on a stir tank reactor, but there are very good reasons why you would select something else. Now, first of all, finances always play a role, uh, but there are things if, for instance, your cells are very sensitive to shear and they can't cope with mechanical mixing, if you are working with very large volumes, or if you're generating a lot of heat, you might want to consider a couple of other options. And the key one I talked about was an airlift reactor. 
And I mainly focused on the anifier active, because this one avoids mechanical mixing, so it can be very suitable for cells that are shear sensitive. And it's very simple to scale up your RF reactor, you simply make the height of the down comma longer. But you can imagine, because there's a period that the cells are without oxygen then, that there's a critical limit to how tall you can actually go. So I provided a couple of empirical approaches you can follow in order to scale up your reactor. But you will see some are more appropriate for others, so it really depends on the type of cells that you're working with to see whatever is the best approach. And here is this is where the modeling is so important. So if you do it on pilot scale, if you model your system and you really understand the data, that will make the scale up much easier to do. And unfortunately, when you scale up, you will see the physical parameters always change. So there's always things that you have to adjust, such as, for instance, adjusting the stirrer speed to make sure that there's enough oxygen available to your microorganisms. But key criteria here to consider are, for instance, whether your microorganisms are fast or slow growing, or whether they are shear sensitive. Some of the approaches are relatively easy to follow, but some of these parameters, such as, for instance, KLA, are difficult to calculate. So that's also a very practical aspect to whatever works the best. And as I mentioned, because the physical parameters always change, there's always something that you've got to adjust. So in essence, there are some weaknesses to every of these single approaches that you follow, but also some opportunities. So for every single one of the approaches that you will pick, there are some, unfortunately, some weaknesses. So you will need to use some approaches to combat whatever you're doing to your system. So if you go bigger, you always kind of automatically lower KLA. Uh, but for instance, you can combat this by increasing the stirrer speed. Unfortunately, this also increases uh, the power consumption, and it also means that your cooling environments will increase. So that's why the, this uh, scale-up can be very complicated, and you will see there's a drive towards actually smaller reactors, so rather than scaling it up, we look at the concept of scale-out, and rather than making it bigger, we just go to more reactors. Thanks for watching this brief summary, where I discussed important concepts in bioreactors, such as sensors, modeling, and design, and scale-up bioreactors. Thanks for watching.